Hey guys, I've got a problem. My time lapses suck. So in this video, I'm gonna be designing, I'm gonna be coding, I'm gonna be 3D printing an orbital camera rig that is completely app controlled. It can be mounted upside down, upside up, or even on a tripod. Let's get started. What I'm thinking is I use this stepper motor and I rotate this pipe here. It's a scrap piece of PVC pipe. I wanna use the ESP32, cause then I can make a web app with that. I have a power adapter at 12 volts to run the stepper driver and everything. I have a converter to take 12 volts down to, I think it's five volts for the ESP. I got a driver to go between the ESP and the stepper driver. Got a cooling fan in case the driver gets a bit hot. Got a scrap piece of LED strips that I can go ahead and use to uh, give like a status, like if it's on or off or whatever. And I got a couple of these little bearing guys here, as well as an adapter so that I can plug in, pow, as well as some spare wire and a transistor, which I think you need for the driver to work better. A transistor. I think it's called capacitor. While that's printing, let's write the web app so we can control the stepper motor. Now, I want to be able to input a degree, like 90 degrees uh, time frame, like over two hours, uh, and the ability maybe to add pauses. So rotate 90 degrees, pause, then rotate uh, negative 90 degrees, pause over two hours and, and be able to set those kind of parameters. I've never ran a web app for an ESP32. To give me a jump start on learning, I think I'm going to try ChatGPTY, and we shall see. I don't even know how to get started. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write, I'm gonna ask it to write code uh, for an ESP32 to control A4988 stepper driver, as well as RGB LED uh, light for uh, a status indicator. And that uh, I want to have a web interface you can connect to from Wi-Fi with a degree input and a time input. Uh, these two need to be grouped together and you need the ability to add or remove groupings as well as it needs to have settings, I think, where you can set how many steps uh, equals what degree, kind of as a baseline settings. And um, I want it to look modern and sophisticated. Yeah, I really don't know what else. We're first time doing this, I don't know if I'm putting too much information in there, or if more information, the merrier. We're gonna find out. I have no idea what this code even says to be honest with you. <laughs> So it took me a day to realize that I couldn't upload anything to my ESP32 because I had the wrong cable. And then it took me another day to realize that you have to partition the ESP32 in order to use the file system on the ESP32. But nevertheless, I got a demo app going. I'm going to show you where I'm at. So what I've done is I have some LED lights. I'm going to be lighting up here. Uh, just using this is on the desktop. This is just this is Firefox. This is uh, Edge, and this is my phone. And so you'll see real time everything updates at the same time and perfect you can do either or now that that's over with let's go grab the print you know if you're having a hard time removing prints from the print bed one thing that's often overlooked is just leaving them on there for a couple months
time to finally assemble it and see how it works. But before we do, I just want to say these gears, pleasantly surprised with how well they mesh together and how well they stay in line. Next up, I got this little guy. I had a theory that maybe for mounting the circuit boards, because not all circuit boards have screw holes like this one. Like I don't think the SP has screw holes or the driver has screw holes. So what if I could build something where it can just clamp on the outside like this? So you pop the circuit board in there just like that. It clamps onto it. I should be able just to pop it right into the, the actual holder here. You see I got these little things on the inside here. So, and then we want to take it out, squeeze the tabs, and it's out. Okay, let's get started with the soldering. So I guess when it's minus 40, uh, <laughs> got everything roughly laid out. This helped me visually see where everything needs to go and the length of wire. Did find a carbon filter, so I went ahead and just taped that on, and now I can still use my exhaust. All done, now time to test it out. I forgot to adjust the stepper driver voltage, so I'm just gonna adjust that and then we'll test it out. Makes cool noise, uh, does not do anything. Okay, I wired it wrong. So the degree is off because I think I have a one to four gear ratio right here, but anyway, it works. So she's a really tight fit. The fan is not gonna fit in here at all. So we're just gonna cut the fan out. Okay, fan's gone. I should have put all the hardware in first. There's a hole right here that I gotta get to with a bolt and a wrench. So yeah, I definitely did not do that in the right order. Hey guys, just a brief overview on the design and the app. So we have a small gear, driving a big gear with a hole for a PVC pipe to go through. I used a bolt uh, and I did this because I didn't want any weight on the stepper motor. Um, and so the stepper motor is just a drive gear while all the weight goes on this big gear here. And uh, the bolt has a bearing on each side. And the reason is, is that way you can have it this way and you can put stuff weight this way or you can have it this way and you can hang stuff. I got four holes here. So I can screw it into like a piece of wood, screw it into the roof. And I also have another hole where I can mount it to a tripod. So I can actually have it on the tripod uh, spinning around me. 
Uh, the overall design, it's pretty tight. If I were to redo that, I would design the circuitry a bit better. I used a clamp system for the, the stepper with two screws. I put side vents for air holes and there was supposed to be a fan blowing in and then pushing air out the side vents. I made this part of the case really thick so that it can stand the weight. Uh, whereas this part is substantially thinner. Uh, it's still pretty thick, all things considered. So the app has a uh, manual mode where you can just pick uh, rotate clockwise, counterclockwise, and you can play and pause each, each direction as well as reset it. The auto mode, uh, you can set the uh, degrees as well as you can set the time in seconds, minutes, hours. And then from there, you can uh, go ahead and you can pause it still. So if you say like two hours and you wanna pause it halfway through cause you need to get in there to fix the print or something along that lines, Works great. Uh, then there's settings where you can set your manual rotation speed as well as all as your gear ratios, your stepper motor, your input output pins, as well as then there's just an info page where it just has some resources I used as well as a link uh, to the GitHub repository, which you would know if you were already on that page. So that didn't make sense. The app uses web sockets, so it communicates real time and gets update real time. I have it updating about five times a second right now uh, with information and I figured that was like more than enough I wanted to do once a second, but then it kind of looked like a little choppy on the updates if you go a bit faster. If you want to build your own, all the files are available on my website, as well as the code is available on GitHub, both linked in the description. Thanks so much for watching.